Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty and the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you for stopping by and hanging out with me for a little bit today. Today, I am talking about the best makeup of 2021 for now. And I'm going to be talking about everything except the eyeshadow palettes because y'all already know. I could talk about eyeshadow all day and I need a whole video dedicated to the eyeshadow palettes I've tried and what I think about them. My heart's already getting full thinking about that video, but right now we're talking about everything else but. So if you wanna see what I am loving this year, keep on watching this video. If makeup is your therapy, if it makes you feel good and you like to have fun and just, you know, have a good time and do a little shocking and jiving, definitely consider subscribing and joining this community because I would love to have you back. All right, let's get started. I had to make sure I didn't have any lipstick on my teeth. This is like mid-year favorites. I don't do favorites videos every month because I use <laughs> most of the same stuff. A little bit about me. I am solely obsessed with eyeshadow. Everything else I am pretty much a minimalist on. I tend to go for the same types of products and they last me a long time because I don't use a lot. That's why y'all don't see me buying a whole lot of lipsticks and, and foundations and bronzers and all that because I never run out. I'm gonna talk about the products I'm using, my go-to products, and I'm gonna try to do this in the order of how I put my makeup on, if that makes sense. And that way I won't leave anything out. So first I'm gonna talk about cleansers and moisturizers. And this is drugstore, y'all. Now, there are three different cleansers I use. Two are drugstore and one is not. So the ones that clear up my acne are my Biore products. I have the Charcoal Acne Clearing Cleanser and I have the pore clarifying cooling cleanser. Usually I will pick one of these and use that once a day. The other cleanser that I'm currently using is the Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Cleanser. This one is super light, it's super creamy, doesn't have a strong scent, and I really like this. So I'll alternate, I'll pick one for the morning and one for the evening. Now when I want to exfoliate, y'all, this is, this is going strong. This is the Tatcha Rice Polish, and it's a foaming enzyme powder, and it's for normal to dry skin, so I would say I have pretty normal skin for the most part. This is super gentle, and I love it. And even though it's expensive, like I said, I've had this now for over a year. I do not exfoliate every day. Should I be? I don't know, let me know. Now, as far as face moisturizer, another Neutrogena product that has been very helpful is this oil-free acne moisturizer. It has a pink grapefruit scent and it clears breakouts and has a lightweight moisture. And I love all of these because you can get them right from Walgreens. Now, I am not a skincare expert by any means, but I will say I've tried more expensive cleansers, but these are doing the trick for me. I like how my skin looks. And I noticed that when I ran out of that Neutrogena moisturizer that I was using daily, the breakouts started and I was trying to think about what was different. And I think what was different was that I didn't have my Neutrogena, maybe, I don't know. Now, before I go to bed, I do put on this Laneige, I think that's how you pronounce it, water sleeping mask. I had this as a sample and really liked it. And I ended up finding it in TJ Maxx for $19.99, which is a definite steal. This is what it looks like. And as you can see, I am definitely using this frequently. This is a purifying moisture mask that has something called sleep tops in it. And it's hydrating and it leaves your skin feeling really soft and glowy in the morning. All you have to do is put this on and go to sleep. And I'm for that because I just don't have time for like this crazy detailed skincare routine. That's why y'all don't see me do many videos on it because I don't have one. So when I start to put my makeup on, I usually do my brows first. What I've been using for my brows, which I have been loving, is the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. This is just one of those felt tip pens. I really, really like this because you are able to make those feather like hair strokes because i'm really trying to do the feather brows but i don't have a whole lot of brows because 
I don't know if y'all saw that picture of me on my stories the other day where some one of my friends was like, your brows were so different. I was like, yeah, they were so a mess. You know, I am not a brow, you know, connoisseur or anything like that, but I'm trying to have them just look more natural and less structured. So as you can see, they're not like, you know, perfect. But this brow tint pen definitely adds like a natural hair-like stroke. Before using this pen, I was using just the uh, Maybelline Micro Brow Pencil, and those still work really well, but I, I really like the, the fine strokes that you can make with this. Now what I've been, now what I've been doing on top of that to set them in place, I have been using this brow soap by the brand You Can Be. This is on Amazon. So I do have the Patrick Ta brow wax, but I've just been using this. And all you do is after you do the, the pen, you just, you know, put a little water on the spoolie and just kind of go like that. And that kind of gives me a little bit of a feathery look, but I am still working with that for my brows. That's just a, what do you call it? A uh, ongoing process. But that's all I do for my brows, that's all I use. So that's it for that, that's easy. The next step for me is primer. Now I have fallen in love with the Tatcha Silken Pore Perfecting Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 35. Now this is a primer and a sunscreen. I love this stuff because y'all, don't, don't even say anything. I was not putting on any additional sunscreen uh, in addition to what was already in like my foundation. So I know that's a big no-no. Now, although this is a sunscreen, it is a blurring primer and it works really well under makeup as it should, because this I think is like $60. Like you don't need a whole lot. I don't notice a white cast. It does smell like sunscreen just to taste but it's not overpowering. Now, it does look a little white when you put it on, but like just a little bit. But once you rub it in, you don't need a lot and put your makeup on. There's no like ashiness or anything like that. I really, really do like this. This is pretty much the only primer I have been using since I bought it. So I would recommend this if you were curious about that. So my primer's on and the next thing I would do is my foundation. Now there are only two foundations I have really been using this year. So the first is my Huda Beauty Faux Filter Foundation Stick. Now I, I did buy this last year, but I cannot get enough of this. This is the best foundation stick. I was gonna say it's the best foundation stick I've tried. Probably one of the only ones I've tried, but there's no need for me to even look any further, to be honest with you. There's a lot of product here, and every time I use makeup, I'm, I'm using this, so. I still have a great amount left. Right now, I don't have foundation on my whole face. I only put it where I had the breakout, so it's only here on my chin and a little bit here, a little bit here, and I did a little under the eyes. I don't have much on today at all, but I think this is a really natural, natural look. I think it's easy to use. I don't know if I mentioned that it's fragrance free. I will definitely be getting another one of these. I wear the shade Baklava, it's 340G. I think it's a perfect shade match. And when I do put this on, I just take one of my foundation brushes. Sometimes I'll spray it with setting spray and just blend it out, but it's so easy. No matter what time of year it is, I don't like to feel makeup on my face. That's why I said I'm pretty much a minimalist with everything except eyeshadow. Because once I feel something and notice it, I, I just don't like that. I don't like that heaviness. So most of the foundations I buy are medium coverage and they're just, they're just not heavy. So the other product that I really enjoy are the Fenty Beauty Ease Drops. Now these came out this year. I have the shade 13 and it's a blurring skin tint. I think this makes your skin look great. I think it's lightweight and I mean, it just makes your skin look like skin. It just evens it out without being heavy. You know, I, I would expect this to be good because we're not getting no music from Rihanna. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, 
if we're not getting no music, then I just feel like whatever you're putting out, if it's not the R9 album, it should be fire. And this is great concealer. There's only one concealer for me in this world, and that is the Pat McGrath concealer that I'm still using. I did buy, I did buy backup of this, but I don't know what to say. This is the best concealer that I've ever used. There's just, I'm sorry if y'all hear a uh, melee going on in the background, but the kids are being supervised. Ariel is out there, but this concealer is the best concealer. It's not cakey. It just looks so good on your skin and I'm just, mm, I just think it's great. And I do sometimes double and use it as an eyeshadow primer. So I don't know what to say, Mama Pat. Whatever, whatever you did with this, this is just, just don't change it. This is the bee's knees as far as I'm concerned for concealers. And I just don't really have any desire to try another one in life. So as long as it stays the same, this will probably be my tried and true concealer for the duration of my years. So there are three bronzers that I've been using. These are my go-to bronzers. I'm not sure if it's because they're just the first ones that I see in the drawer or what, but uh, these three have just been great and they are my two Gucci bronzers. I have two shades. Uh, the first shade is 03. So that's shade 03. And it's one of the medium shades. And then I have shade four, which is more of a tan, uh, a tan shade. Four is a lot warmer to me than the three. So you can see that one's a lot warmer than this one. Despite the scent, which I'm not overly crazy about, uh, it doesn't really bother me and it doesn't linger. I will continue to use the mess out of these bronzers until they are no more because, you know, they're expensive. Now, the other bronzer that I am still really loving is my Fenty Cream Bronzer. I have it in the shade Honey Glaze and I love this bronzer. It's not heavy, but I love this bronzer too. This is a great one. And again, no new music from Rihanna. So I'm just expecting everything to be top notch from Miss Robin Fenty. We gotta talk about blush. Let's first talk about the Pat McGrath blushes. Now, I understand that these blushes just came out in May, but there are three of the blushes that I really, really wanna mention because I did buy all nine blushes and I am not reaching for all nine. Don't say anything about that because I will circle back with some of the others, but the three that I love are Flirtatious, Desert Orchid, and Paradise Venus. So let me just run through these really quick. Now, Flirtatious was the biggest surprise for me because it was the lightest shade. But the way it shows up on my skin, I just love it because it's more of like an ethereal glow. It really shows up way more than you think that it would. And I think it goes with a variety of looks. This one really surprised me and I love the way it looks. The next shade is Desert Orchid. Now, Desert Orchid is getting into those orangey type tones that I really, really like. And again, it is light. It has like a little bit of sheen to it and so does Flirtatious. And then the last shade is Paradise Venus. Paradise Venus was the deepest shade. So you see it's more of that like clay type color. It's, you know, it's just a really nice color. And it's a unique color, uh, I think. You know, it's almost like a reddish brown. Those are my three favorites out of the Pat McGrath blushes. So that means I could have probably just bought a trio, but you know, I wouldn't know. Now, continuing on with blush. Two blushes, and I just realized I forgot to talk about setting powder, so I'm gonna get to that in a minute. But two blushes that really, really surprised me this year came from ColourPop, and this was from the Wild Child collection. So I'm wearing uh, one of them now, the deeper one, and I didn't put a bronzer on today, but I just wanted to give my face a little bit of color. 
and you probably can't really even see it because of the camera but this wild child collection i think was one of their best collections i know people aren't really talking about it i think it was a really nice collection very well done and i like that it was brown girl friendly i know some people had issues because it was called wild child but so here we have the shade Jet Set and we have the shade Trippin', which is deeper. I kind of thought this was gonna be too deep for me. I was like, oh, I can use this as a bronzer. No, it makes the most beautiful blush shade. And here they are side by side. I just think these blush shades are great. And they were different from ColourPop. Like ColourPop is always coming out with these bright blushes. A lot of them look the same. But I thought that these two shades were really different for the brand. And I like how they look on. And I like when I use it because I can just almost just use it as a like blush slash bronzer situation and just give myself a little bit of color. Cause y'all know, I don't know if y'all understand like how pale I really am. Like I'm very pale. Now, last but not least, I cannot do a favorites video without mentioning my melt blushes. And no, I'm not talking about those cream blushes. I am still on these digital dust duo blushes. Y'all, I don't know. These are just so good and they're still worth getting on the sale. But I mean, they're worth the regular price, but I'm just saying like these shades are great. They are great, great, great. Every single shade. Love Raw Honey. If I do my eye makeup first, which is what I usually do, I already know I could put Raw Honey on and it's going to be whatever. It'll, it'll match pretty much whatever I'm putting on. So you have your, your deeper shade and then your little highlight shade. I usually just mix them both. Buzzkill, that's that corally color. Buzzkill is bomb. And then we have Queen Bee, which is like your little golden, you know, golden bronzy type shimmers. Like, I just feel like these look good on everyone. I think the only, people that would have an issue with these is if you don't like shimmery blush which some people don't like shimmery blushes so i totally get that but for me who usually goes for more of like that dewy look these are the bee's knees the bee's knees literally so let's go back to after i put my concealer on and then i put on my setting powder under my eyes I usually don't set my whole face with powder. I don't do that, but I have one tried and true and then one new one. So my tried and true is my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. And you will see a girl has hit pan on this. I love this. I just know sometimes when I get up on people, I can see all the powder on their face. Like it looks cakey, it's, it's a lot. This doesn't do that so i will be using that but this year i also tried out the new tatcha setting powder it is the radiant translucent setting powder y'all this it's so good you don't need a lot so this is gonna last me i wish i could show it to you but it's like i don't want to waste it but the powder comes out of this like middle thing right here and I just, I just really, really like it. Y'all can see like the, the logo is gone. Like these products I'm sharing with you are, are things that I really, really go to when I do like my face base, because I, I'm just not gonna sit up here and share just any random stuff or like that I'm not using like that. This stuff I have been using like all year. I've been using it since I bought it, like have not put it away, have not stopped using it. So I just wanted to say that for accuracy. Oh, I forgot under eye cream, y'all. I have two under eye um, gels or creams that I've been using. The first one is by Good Molecules, and this is the Yerba Mate Wake Up Eye Gel. Uh, this is just to kind of like wake up your eye area. Um, I don't sleep very well, so I usually like to use this in the morning. Yadi sent me the Dr. Brandt Triple Peptide Eye Cream, and I've been using that in the morning and the evening. So these are both really good eye creams. I meant to say that with the skincare, but I forgot. So now it's time to prime the eyes. So what I have been using to prime my eyes, I've been using 
a couple of things. These ColourPop cream eyeshadows, I know some people compare them to the MAC Paint Pots, but I've never tried those, so I can't say that. But these make great eye primers, and I just ordered a deeper shade. These came out with the Wild Nothing collection that was like nothing. I was so upset with that collection, I don't wanna talk about it. But I did like these. So this is the shade Laurel. And then I also have the shade Camouflage, and then I bought a deep one. Here's Camouflage. I recently started using the Glam Light Eye Sing eyeshadow primers. Now these work really well too. And I have the shade Classic Vanilla and Buttercream. These are both super light. So I think the Classic Vanilla would be more like if I'm gonna do a cut crease, because you see how light that is. I know some people go super light with their primers, but I don't. And again, Buttercream is a bit light too. So that's Buttercream. So they work well as eyeshadow primers though. That's the point. Now for a glitter glue, which y'all probably don't see me using glitter glue a lot, I usually just will dip my brush into the shade and use a setting spray. But I have tried out this Glam Glue from the Glam Shop, which is an indie brand from Poland, and that is the Glam Glue. But it does work pretty well as far as what is it? Keeping the eyeshadows on your eyes, making the glitter stay. Like this is a good glitter glue. I do like this. So I would recommend it if you uh, are purchasing from Glam Shop, I would throw in a Glam Glue in my Glam Bag. Two highlighters. So I would do my highlighter after my blush. Uh, the two highlighters I have are pretty much the same actually. The Pat McGrath Divine Glow and then the Natasha Denona, I need a new glow. Haven't been wearing a lot of blingy highlighters lately. I'm just, I guess, in a phase. You can see that these highlighters are both kind of this champagne gold color. So the top one is Pat McGrath and the bottom one is Natasha Denona. So you really don't need both of them, to be honest. But they are very nice, they're very smooth. They're very skin-like, and if you like a natural highlight, I would recommend these if you're looking for one. Highlighters are something I really don't need, but a Pat McGrath highlighter, I do need that. Not going into eyeshadow, I told y'all that, but let's talk a little bit about brushes because I, I really have to do this review. I was watching Nikki Raven, and she had done a brush review on these brushes from Amazon called MSQ. There are 12 eyeshadow brushes and they are $8.99. I think I've been using these brushes for at least two months at this point. So I can go ahead and say like, I know Tonya G's got brushes coming out and stuff like that, but I gotta cut some corners when I can. I'm very happy with uh, my brushes that I have, especially like my refer brushes. And I do wanna try some of the luxury brush brands like Sonya G, I'd love to try Wayne Goss and like Chikohoto and all of those. But when I can get my refers from the concept store for half off, it's like great. But when you find something like this, this is even better. Now these brushes are a little bit shorter than your traditional uh, brush, but they work beautifully. They work beautifully, they clean up nice. And just stay tuned, because I will do a review with an eyeshadow look so you can see how these work. But again, this was just a treasure to find on Amazon. And I am loving these brushes. These are the ones I kind of reach for nowadays. And I'm really happy because that means I could buy more eyeshadow palettes. Now the other brush that I bought this year that I'm really loving is this Rare Beauty Concealer Brush. It does need to be washed, but I really like the shape of this brush. This just allows you to get exactly where you need it to and um, and get exactly where you need it to. I don't, I'm not sure what else to say, but it just, it's a really nice shape for the uh, under eye area. And I really like this brush. I'm glad I got this. I got this at the VIB sale this year. So I did my eye look. I will be doing eyeliner and mascara next. The ColourPop BFF mascara has always been a favorite of mine. This one is like that wine burgundy color. 
I just like it because I like to use colored mascara from time to time. Most of the time I'm using it on my bottom lashes. Sometimes I don't like the way black mascara looks on my bottom lashes. I really like a brown or like a pop color. I like this burgundy color. I like the yellow one, which they need to restock. I have the electric blue and just gives a different, you know, touch to your eye look and it's affordable. See ColourPop, ColourPop, does do some things right but it's, you know sometimes it's hard to see it because they keep coming out with stuff all the time i'm a huge fan of their eyeliners the cream gel eyeliners the uh liquid liner i don't use a lot of liquid liner i actually don't really line the tops of my eyes at all because of my fat hoods because when i do that then all i can see is the daggone liner and i can't see all my hard blending work from my eyeshadow looks but I have a ton of these cream gel eyeliners and they are so good. You know, eyeliner can just add so much to a look. You know, I remember doing a purple look and then I put a yellow in here and it just really, you know, elevated the look to me. We're going to lip liners and lipsticks and y'all can say what y'all want. I know the brand is shutting down, but now's your chance. The KKW Beauty Lip Liners. This is a mini set. There were eight of these. See how slightly different these shades are? That's what I loved about her lip liners and her lipsticks because they were just like little increments. I'm wearing KKW Beauty right now. Y'all probably was like, is that Agatha Orange? No. So, <laughs> I don't know what the issue is with the brand. I know it's shutting down. I was tempted, but I did not buy that camo palette. I know y'all probably thought I caved in and bought it, but that is a palette I just really, really don't need, but it is pretty. Going with the liners are the lipsticks. So I'm wearing Peach 4. They're just very simple. I have Pink 5, New 3.5, Peach 2. They're a comfortable formula to wear. They do have a bit of a cosmetic scent. I don't know how to explain that but they're soft, they're not drying, and I think they look really nice. These ColourPop lippy sticks, these are really nice. Now these three are from none other than the Wild Child Collection. I just love these chocolatey nudes. Let me just show you. We have these three shades. I just think they're beautiful. They're lightweight. They smell good. These are great tones. I, I enjoy these lippy sticks a lot and they're cheap. You know what I mean? Like let's go to some other lipsticks. Now I probably have mentioned this in any favorites video I've ever done. This is my Pat McGrath Divinal Lip Shine in the shade Nude Venus, which is almost done. Absolutely adore these lip shines. I have several. This is my favorite shade. Love these. Also from that collection, the blush collection, the matte trance lipstick. This is the shade Dream Lover. I love this shade. I love, love, love this shade. I love that this is a matte lipstick formula that doesn't dry your lips out. Another favorite of mine, my Natasha Denona. I need a new lipstick. I have two shades. I have, um, lies i have uh three shades i think i have maria andrea and yama are the shades i have and they're just all those you know nudes and i love to wear those with really bold eyeshadow looks those are amazing i have two of the juvia's place matte lipsticks a mauve moment from the mauves or mauve i have mademoiselle so you kind of see there's kind of a theme to the lipsticks that I wear. I don't really like red lipstick on me, but I do like bold shades, but not red. I think the most surprising lip product for me were these Kaleidos Lip Clays. I just love that they're matte, but they don't dry your lips out. We're not wearing masks as much, but I still wear masks, you know, and these are just great. So we had these uh, nude colors and then we had these uh, bold colors and these bold colors, y'all, I'm going to tell you what shade I really liked. Cactus flower. Oh my goodness. Like look at that. this shade on beautiful. The mahogany shade, the agave shade. Mahogany is like this deep, deep chocolate brown matte, gorgeous. And then agave, this blue. I'll swatch the last one, which is Dahlia. Now that's a nice red. It's not like a 
bright red. I think I might like these lip clays more than the Flower Punk palette. And then the last thing I would do is I would set my face and I have been loving this Milk Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. I use this sometimes throughout the makeup process. It does separate into these two, uh, you know, formulas or whatever, but this is a nice setting spray. Man, I think that's it. But that's why I couldn't do the eyeshadow palettes because this is too much. So yeah, y'all, this is the best makeup that I have used in 2021 so far. Um, the one thing I will mention, I do also love this Kaleidos Agave Lip Mask. It does make your lips very soft, but my favorite, and I have a backup of this, I just can't find it, is the Milk Melatonin Lip Mask. I love that. I use that as a lip balm, but you know, you do put it on at night, and it really helped my lips during the winter months. Like I didn't have any issues. Sometimes I have issues when I wear matte lipsticks, and sometimes put just a little, little teeny, teeny drop before you put the matte liquid lipstick on. I've had no issues with my lips being dry or chapped or just getting irritated. So that melt melatonin is really my number one, but since I can't find my backup, I did pull this out and this is very softening and I love it too. That's it y'all. So that is my best in beauty for everything other than eyeshadow palettes. I think I covered it all. When I take my makeup off, for the most part, I have been using the Sephora uh, wipes, the charcoal wipes. I think they're right here. Let me grab them. And I use this, and I also use a Neutrogena eye makeup remover. That gets all of the glue and, and everything out of my lashes and off my eyes. Let me know what some of your favorites are that you've been using this year. I'm so sorry if you've been hearing a whole bunch of ruckus in the back, but yeah, definitely let me know. And uh, you know, at the end of the year, it'll be nice to come back and see like, am I using these same things or have I moved on to other things? It kind of helps me to know like what my style is. And hopefully, you know, you'd hope that means you won't keep buying stuff, but I'm not even gonna say that because I'd, I'd be lying to myself. So thank y'all so much for taking out some of your time and sharing it with me today. I hope this was therapy for you because it was for me. So until I see you again, make sure you are being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice, stay safe, and I will see y'all really soon because we're gonna talk about some eyeshadow palettes. All right, bye.